Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, we've been uh, pretty busy over in the DD camp. Um, a lot of the stuff we did for our own gateway was pretty much done from scratch. We didn't even take on Ether as a dependency for our Ethereum integrations. But what I wanted to uh, show you guys is a uh, mock-up for V1 of our website, which, you know, I actually have a, uh, a real designer working on the site now, but I, I rigged all the functionality, but I wanted to give you guys like a little glimpse into uh, what's going on in our world. So um, this is an overview of what our architecture looks like. Mm -hmm. So from one end, if you're the end, if you're a user going to our dashboard, getting API keys, um, you're going to interact directly with the Svelte-based website. But of course, if you're a developer, you're going to directly hit our reverse proxy. Mm -hmm. Now, the really cool thing about our setup is that we have stateless monoliths backing everything. So all mm -hmm. of our interactions to the gateway server and to Pocket, to our database, and even to our own infrastructure that we're running, um, that's all being load balanced between these instances. Now it's it's fully Rust based and it's highly efficient. Um, but here's here's some of the interactions from the front end, which you might have the pleasure of experiencing. I'll open up the network tab so you can kind of get an idea of how fast or slow some of these requests are. Most of the variance is between two to seven milliseconds. And the cool thing about this benchmark is that on the key generation path, we're actually running multiple SQL queries. On the server side here, um, if you see on the bottom right-hand corner, um, you can see the actual time it's taking on the server for these types of actions. And, um, oh, I'll show you the actual uh, integration into the, uh, the pocket server, because that's pretty cool. Um, a lot of the magic is through type system. Um, here's some commented out code for later. But um, I have a cool enum that represents all the pocket mm -hmm. chains here. And instead of heap allocating a hash map, I kind of manually just wrote another function, so to speak. Very common in FP if you don't want um, a static memory in this way. So on the actual route here, we um, <clears throat> from the path, we will take your key and, or sorry, we take your key in the middleware, verify it's you, do the relevant operations. Then we send it through this relay pocket transaction method which goes ahead, it gets the endpoint from the method I showed you earlier and then sends it off to the server. Um, it's a little up in the air as to for MVP, whether or not we'll have some of our own managed infrastructure. But um, what we do have running already is extremely quick and low latency. And so for our release, at least, that's our number one focus. We, we want to be the fastest and we will optimize every clock cycle until that happens. But yeah, we're virtually feature complete at this point for our MVP. Um, the last thing we actually have to do is on-chain payments, which I actually miraculously just got a PR, PR in for. Very grateful that someone did a PR for that. And um, yeah, then I'm gonna hook it up. The designer is going to get his hands on the site so it doesn't look like a uh, backend developer wrote the website. And yeah, persist the logic and uh, let the uh, CSS flow. Great, great. Th thank you, Abdul. Uh, just one question here: Do, do you use uh, the uh, the the Pocket Gateway server as a backend, or you are directly uh, going through uh, another API? Yeah. So in the background here, we do we do have the um, the Golang based Gateway server here, and that's hooked up to the monolith through the um, through their JSON RPC. And um, at this level, um, there's also going to be some load balancing as well. Um, once we get to the point at least where we run our own infrastructure separate from Pocket, and once Pocket starts supporting these things, of course, we could run them as nodes on Shannon or something like that. But yeah, that's that's the main idea. Everything is kind of hooked together 
um, by this stateless Rust monolith. So how does how does your gateway uh, deal with uh, uh, kind of geo routing to you know get get requests to the closest nodes? Is are it you know as part of the service you're running geolocated um, uh, DNS or something like that routing uh, to one of to then one of the uh, stateless gateway servers? So that's one thing we definitely plan on doing. For MVP, at least, we don't expect anyone to be able to actually overrun an individual node. But if that does happen, um, we'll be able to spin up another instance through our, through our um, containerization. And of course, when we spin up this instance, we'll put it in a different region. But um, I, I think that is a great idea, though. Uh, I am going to steal that. Thank you for contributing, my friend. Yeah, and and uh, these uh, I, I I forget what you call them, but stateless uh, you call them gateway instance or something like that. I'm, I'm what, what did you call it again? Uh, stateless Rust gateway. Okay, yeah, the, the the stateless Rust gateway. So, is that something that uh, other people would be able to run, uh, or or is that or is that still all internal? Like you could spin up more of these uh, instances if you need them, but other people aren't running these gateways, are they? Um, other people are not. Um, so okay. this is mostly a big part of our scaling strategy. So okay. as soon as one monolith starts to get overloaded, which granted is going to take uh, an extreme load, um, we'll be able to spin up another one, uh, split the load, make sure it doesn't get overwhelmed, and make sure we can keep um, all the benefits of statelessness. Being able to um, horizontally scale at will, fully proportional to whatever we add onto our network. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you.